So my name's Carolyn Cowan. I know there's a lot of new people here. So my name's Carolyn Cowan and um, I teach Kundalini Global. I'm a Kundalini Global teacher trainer, but also um, I, I do this very interesting thing, which is why I do this thing, which is that I'm 30 years clean and sober. 30 years is a bloody long time, I have to tell you. I don't know if you know this, but from 10 to 20 is considered the graveyard years. So not only have I gone through the graveyard years, but I've gone 10 years beyond that. And I think what's really interesting about long-term sobriety, about any kind of sobriety, is it's all about being able to, to manage the mind. Because if you can't manage the mind, you're, you're, this, you know, sobriety becomes even more challenging. There's loads of us here who are in sobriety who could, you know, we all maybe got clean and sober from drugs or alcohol. I, my things were drugs, alcohol, and gambling. And um, I got clean and sober in 91, very long time ago. And um, I got clean and sober and that was great, but I felt like I'd put down all my safety nets because obviously the drugs and the alcohol meant I didn't, didn't think about anything. But what then happened and what took me a very long time to get my head around was what my mind did afterwards. So the anxiety, the overwhelm, the triggers, because I used the drugs, the alcohol and the gambling to manage the anxiety, the overwhelm and the triggers. So, so what's interesting in the conversation that if you're new to me, you might not know is I got clean and sober through 12-step recovery, but I'm not a great fan of the disease model. I believe as a psychotherapist, I'm a psychotherapist specializing in shame, abuse, and trauma. I think that what trips us up and what leads us to these very extreme behaviors is a history, a tall, dark history, and um, a very tall, dark history. And when we're looking at a tall, dark history, we're looking at a brain that is wired to be overwhelmed, but we're also looking at a body that responds to this brain wiring. So we have this mind-body axis, which means that it's very easy to become overwhelmed and it becomes a very physically unpleasant experience. So we can find ourselves wanting to self-harm. We can find ourselves wanting to purge, wanting to eat, wanting to do anything, porn, dating apps, whatever, anything to change how we feel. And in that context, all I'm really talking about is our addictive behaviors. But one of the things that we will do if we have a tall, dark history is we'll probably have quite, those generally tend to be behaviors that we offend against ourselves with, but we'll also have the behaviors where we offend against other people. So we offend in and we offend out. And so we can be very attacking. We can be very hysterical. We can be very aggressive. We can be very manipulative to lots of things. And it doesn't mean we're not lovely. It's just what we do as a way of keeping ourselves safe. There's a big argument, there's a big conversation that I've had over the years, isn't everyone addicted? Of course, in some way, yes. And now that social media has discovered how to hack our brains, yes. But the other side of that is actually very few people want to do anything about it. And you're here because you want to do something about it. And that's an amazing thing. And one of the things that I'm very keen on, and as a Kundalini Global teacher, everybody else who is a Kundalini Global teacher will know is, um, that the route through the trigger, the route through the overwhelm, the route through the anxiety is actually through the body. So how I teach yoga is we start the class by resetting the stress system. And actually you coming to, to class with me is gift is that you gift me the ability to help you land into presence as in the ability to be present. So you come to Kundalini Global class and you gift the teacher the ability to help you land into presence. And over time, that becomes a very life-changing experience. And, and then it becomes a, a thing that becomes actually really important. So when we go back to containing the addictive mind, I thought it was interesting to run a series that looks at how do you deal with the overwhelm? How do you deal with the triggers? What do you do when you're triggered? And I'm just going to assume that most of you are new to me and you never heard most of this stuff before or lots of you are new to me and that's great so we're going to work with the body to be able to soften the mind we're going to work with the body to release the contracts we have agreements and contracts about how we think how we feel how we behave we've made these agreements with our family our history our story our bosses our children our partners and we don't have to abide by them we can change we can choose to change and breath work and yoga allow you and give you the possibility of changing so that's what we're going to play with. And I thought today, as it's the first of a series of six, and there are quite so many new people, 
I thought I'd start today with a very interesting thing, which is a lot of people who have an addiction history or a tall dark history or self-harming history or anything that might have brought you here. A lot of people that I work with as like a therapist, they believe they're cursed. They believe that they're toxic, that they're poisonous. They have this very, very deep shame body that means that the thinking process about themselves is that they're fundamentally flawed, as in there's something not right within them, that they're bad. And I think that it's a very, very interesting thing to be able to take on using the body. And so we're going to do a series which is called Clearing Karma. <clears throat> so in the yoga world, if you're, you might be new to the yoga world, but in the yoga world, a lot of its thinking comes from Hindu philosophy, which says that you can clear this karmic load. And karma is kind of like what you came with that you need to deal with, what you came into this world with that you need to face. So, you know, you could say what you came into this world with might have been a tall dark history, which led you to an addiction history, which meant that's actually what you've got to deal with in this life is trying to work out how do you change yourself. So when we do Kundalini Global, we land into presence, we reset the stress system, and it is in a state of presence that we can create this fantastic energy field of intention. So the intention of the class today is, we're going to do a meditation to conquer self animosity. We tend to hate ourselves, or we tend to hate how we feel, or we tend to reject how we feel, or we judge how we feel. And that allows us to act out. So that's an interesting one, big conversation. I won't go into it now. So we're gonna do a meditation to conquer self animosity. I'm going to teach you how to do a particular breath. You need to learn a breath, particularly if you're new. And then we're going to do this series, which is for clearing karma. So it has an amazing meditation at the beginning. So as we go towards that, I will explain it. So let's do it. <laughs> 